This week on ANN, tropical cyclone Gita relief efforts continue in Tonga. Loma Linda University Cancer Center receives a coveted recognition for its successful clinical trials. And Adventist evangelist Mark Finley reflects on the legacy and prolific ministry of Billy Graham. These stories and more coming up. We have another report of the aftermath from Tropical Cyclone Gita, which caused widespread damage in Central Pacific Islands. Gita was the strongest storm recorded for the nation of Tonga. The storm generated winds that reached up to 200 kilometers per hour, or 124 miles per hour, and caused 18 million U.S. dollars worth of damage. One elderly person was killed as a result of the storm, reportedly from shock, while 33 people were seriously injured. Nearly 80% of the population has been affected by Gita. The 22 Adventist churches located in Tonga have responded to the government's call to action by developing community gardens. They each donated three hectares or seven acres of land for community and church members whose land was severely impacted by the storm. The gardens will allow affected residents the ability to plant crops that will be ready to eat within the next three to six months. The harvested crops will address the predicted food shortage that will begin during that time. In addition, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency of the South Pacific has teamed up with the Tongan Seventh-day Adventist Church to coordinate a cleanup initiative. The team also distributed food to 515 households of extremely vulnerable families identified by the Tongan government. While power has been restored to the essential services of the nation's capital, a majority of households are still without power. We will provide further updates as relief efforts continue. Loma Linda University Cancer Center, or LLUCC, was recently given a highly coveted distinction that only belongs to 29 cancer centers in the United States. The National Cancer Institute, or NCI, designated LLUCC as a high-performing site. LLUCC has 87 cancer trials open for the patient placement. In 2017, more than 1,000 patients were enrolled in cancer trials, 117 of which were selected for therapeutic intervention trials. LLUCC is the oldest and only academic cancer center in southeastern region of the U.S. state of California. Members of faith communities around the world reflected on the legacy of Billy Graham as news spread of his passing at age 99. Graham died on February 21 in the U.S. state of North Carolina. It's estimated that he ministered to more than 200 million people in 180 countries around the world. Adventist evangelist Mark Finley, who currently serves as a special assistant to the president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for Evangelism, reflected on Graham's impact on his life. Finley said, in an age when a significant number of public evangelists face challenges in moral and ethical areas, Billy Graham was above reproach, a man of sterling integrity, uncharacteristic humility, moral purity, and unwavering commitment to his Lord and his family, he became a model for tens of thousands of young preachers. He went on to say there are countless others who now rejoice in the truth of Scripture who had their first flush of faith when they heard Billy Graham preach. He led them to Christ, and Jesus took them on a journey of discovery in Scripture from there. I'm reminded of John's poignant words in the Bible's last book, Revelation. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. An Adventist leader in Russia was among the religious, business, and government representatives who attended the 18th National Prayer Breakfast in Moscow. The event on February 20th was held under the theme of Prayer for Russia. It was organized by the National Morning Prayer Foundation, which has worked over the years to bring politicians into dialogue about praying for the nation. The Director for Public Affairs and Religious Liberty for the Church's Euro-Asia region, Oleg Goncharov, participated in the event. He said, When we meet together, we destroy those barriers which are many among believers. Thus, we do what Jesus Christ teaches us, to love our neighbors, to love even those who do not agree with our opinion and worldview. At meetings like this prayer breakfast, those who wish prosperity of Russia gather and are ready together to meet this goal. The chairman of the National Morning Prayer Foundation, Peter Sautov, says another goal of the breakfast is to help create a positive image of Russia around the world. He said the world community should see that Russia is a country that prays, turns to God, seeks His will to solve emerging problems. Today is the responsibility of all Christians who are worried about the future of our country to pray and pray intensely so that the Lord begins to act and begins changes in the hearts of the people. 
According to the church's committee charged with data collection for addressing non-compliant administrative units around the world, the process is well underway. Surveys were sent out last month to all leaders of the Adventist Church's global regions or divisions and the unions within those divisions. The survey was designed by the World Church's Office of Archives, Statistics and Research and administered by the office staff. 144 of the 150 surveys that were distributed by the Unity Oversight Committee of the Seventh-day Adventist Church have been returned. The deadline for the remaining surveys is March 15. Adventist leaders around the world will also receive personal visits where they can offer further suggestions on the matter. Both the qualitative and quantitative data will be used to craft a document that will be presented at the 2018 Annual Council for approval. Coming up, an Adventist Academy math teacher is recognized by the National Museum of Mathematics for his creative approach to the subject. But up next, after working, planning, and praying for three years, an Adventist clinic is established in northeastern Kazakhstan. Olá, meu nome é Viviane e falo português. Existem muitos vídeos legais, mas poucos são traduzidos. Você pode ajudar. Join the Amara Translation and Caption team today. Amara is easy to learn and fun. You can volunteer in your free time. Join this community today and provide great content in your language. Welcome back. The city of Pavlodar, Kazakhstan, has a brand new health clinic that is operated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Adventists in the city have worked for three years to establish the clinic. The facility offers lessons on the principles of a healthy lifestyle, as well as prevention of diseases of the spine, muscle, and skeletal systems. Patients will have the opportunity to take classes called Walk Easy, Quit Smoking Forever, and Healthy Nutrition. They'll also have access to hydrotherapy, massages, exercise simulators, and the option to learn Scandinavian walking techniques. A team of doctors and nurses also offer basic health screenings, including blood pressure, BMI, and height and weight measurements. A teacher at an Adventist Academy was awarded this month with a prestigious prize from a unique mathematics organization in the United States. Matt Engel was given the Rosenthal Prize for his dedication to mathematics and his creative and innovative math lesson. The award is from the National Museum of Mathematics, or MoMath, in New York City. MoMath is the only math museum in North America. The prize package also included a $25,000 cash award. The contest was established in 2012 to recognize and promote distinguished approaches of teaching math. Engel's submission to the contest was a math lesson plan called Bringing Similarity into Light, Experiencing Similarity and Dilations Using Shadows. Engel teaches Algebra 1 and 2, Pre-Calculus and Calculus at Monterey Bay Academy in the U.S. state of California. When speaking about the math in the classroom, Engel said, Students must be given the opportunity to actually problem solve regularly. They should realize that the most important thing to take from their math classes are the habits of mind that result from problem solving. And my classroom is built around this idea. I love exploring and learning new things with my students every day. A group of 60 people from Northwest Brazil recently traveled deep into the Amazon to deliver the gospel to a community with no Christian presence. Novo Tempo sent this report. Existe no Brasil cerca de 35 mil comunidades ribeirinhas e cerca de 10 mil comunidades estão aqui nesta região é, onde nós estamos. Infelizmente, é, a grande maioria dessas comunidades não tem presença evangélica e nós decidimos que nesse período de carnaval nós iríamos procurar fazer a diferença. E nós estamos aqui, mais de 60 pessoas do escritório, famílias de obreiros, é, nessas comunidades, procurando fazer a diferença. Por isso, nós estamos aqui hoje com muita alegria, fazendo esse grande trabalho por amor. In a blessed region full of manioc, chestnuts, açaí and guava, these volunteers found themselves with so much to do. We started off with a, an activity of actually working in their gardens. The local people here garden, and so we broke the groups up and out and went out into their garden to help them in their day-to-day -day activities. We did health fairs, children's activities, where we had 
professors, teachers working with the children uh, with educational things and also the whole group has been involved in construction, um, doing construction of the Adra House where our, our nurse lives and works um, and in another community a little farther away where they had no water in the community at all. Um, we were able to put up a water system that they could have plumbing in their houses, so they could have water, pulling it from the river into tanks to come through and filtering it so they have clean drinking water. When we do um, some kind of action in the community that they themselves understood as a need, that people feel very valued. During this mission, two boats became home for the volunteers. They ate, slept, took a shower in here, but most importantly, they strengthened their commitment with the mission of bringing hope to others. This was Dr. Israel Keros's first mission trip. Minha experiência tem sido incrível aqui nesses dias que passamos no meio da Amazônia, prestando auxílio para todos os ribeirinhos onde temos passado e trazendo então, além de esperança, amor para todos eles. Sim, foi um pouco difícil, mas recompensador através das atividades que foram desenvolvidas, como construir banheiro, feiras de saúde, né, palestras. Então, tudo isso trouxe, através do olhar de cada um deles, a alegria de estar servindo. In a community like this one, it's very common to see health, education and transportation problems. However, during these days, we realized that the greatest need is love. That's why it's so good to know that God, through many, many volunteers, shows his love to everyone. Because at the end, love is our mission. Eu vejo o amor de Jesus que aí vem nessas, nessas pessoas que chegam aqui, que ajudam a gente. Né? Isso faz a gente se sentir bem se sentir amado, se sentir valorizado, principalmente por você, né? Eu consigo ver o amor de Deus que Ele tem por nós, né? Every first Sabbath of the month, a group of youth and young adults from various Adventist churches in the U.S. state of Maryland engage in outreach throughout the region. Generation Loud Cry recently celebrated its fifth anniversary of distributing literature with messages of hope. Generation Loud Cry sent this report. One thing is certain in this world of uncertainty, and that's God's love for us. Join us as we sing, pray, and pass out the love of God through books. You can make a difference in the times we live in. Join us for Out the Pews to the Streets. The time is now. The ministry is gearing up for another outreach this weekend. If you'd like to participate, visit GenerationLoudCry.com or at GenerationLoudCry on Instagram. And finally, for the news this week, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency in the Philippines has created a dy dynamic way to teach the principles of reproductive health to teens. The Embrace Project is educating the youth in the nation's Luzon province. Adra Philippines has more. Productive Health and Gender Issues nating Mobile Theater. It is a part ng awareness campaign program in which yung main audience natin dito is the teachers and the students. Yung play, ang title eh Love Life, uh, Love Your Life, maging winners sa uh, Love at Life. So, kumaga, specifically, it was, the script was written and created for this project. Nakakatuwa kasi comedy yung ano yung story na so, no, sakto doon sa maghintay dapat. Marami pong pinakitang ma magagandang scene yung uh, uh, ADRA, yung presentation na nila, lalong-lalo na po doon yung pag-discuss ng sensitive topic regarding sa sexuality na uh, kinakailangan yung readiness ng isang uh, dalaga at nagbibinata dahil maaari silang mabunti sa konting pagkakamali. Parang bits lang talaga, so, sabi nga na sobrang lawak ng topic para may pasok lahat, pero at least parang contextualize sa, sa buhay ng mga high school kids na 
Champlain naturally they're curious about these things. This is really the need of today mm -hmm. because young ones today are very this, um, curious with regards mm -hmm. to sexual uh, activity. Gusto lang natin ma bigyan sila ng something na magte-trigger ng mind nila na magko-contemplate sila na this is reality na ngayon nangyayari na talaga to and we need to talk about it. Yun din na yung ano sa kanila na yung ilihim pa natin mas maganda yun ng open ang discussion sa kanila. Dito kasi sa lalo na sa mga remote areas siguro talagang uh, may mga maagang nagsisipag asawa kasi kulang yung kaalaman nila sa mga bagay na ganito. In this kind of place some of the students are very you know hindi sila masyadong aware mm -hmm. sa ganung situation. Tayo lang ang nakaalaan. Ay, kanya para hindi magkamali at magulat sa maling akala, dapat lahat tayo ay well-informed. Mas tumatak sa puso ng mga bata, lalo na yung may mga humorous lines na binibitawan yung mga karakter. Nakaka-relate yung mga estudyante dahil kilala nila kung sino yung mga yun kumaga sa, sa kanilang sariling kaklase o markada. I think the students here and the teacher identifies themselves with characters and the situations portrayed in the mobile game. Siyempre, mas natuwa ako dun sa ano, dun sa mga nagpo-play kasi first time kong makanood na ganun siyang ano. Pero mas natuwa ako kasi pinaparating, pinaparating nila sa ating mga, sa aming mga kabataan yung ano, tungkol sa sex nga ko yung kung tungkol sa para mapangalagaan din po natin yung sarili natin. So those schools, especially the Parkland areas, the island ones, it's the first time we see an actual theater or mobile theater. Kung ang palabas talaga associated with those kinds of moves may palabas, mas madaling ma-impact sa mga bata. Ang tawag nga dito parang informants eh, parang uh, performance that is supposed to inform. Mas epektibo po yung pagsasadula po ng ano kaysa po sa pagbabasa lamang dahil mas, ipa, mas ipinapakita po sa pagsasadula kung paano po natin gawin. I'm, I know that I'm contributing something. Maybe a small thing, di ba? Just acting for this play that's an informants. But uh, hopefully, di ba? Who knows, di ba? Uh, that seed might grow. Sana huwag magpadalos-dalos sa usapang ano, pag-ibig pag hindi hindi magsisisaw ang pagsisex ng maaga ay walang walang patutunguhan sa buhay dapat wag tayo magmadali para ano hindi mag hindi po magkawali i am very thankful for you coming here particular na dito kami sa upland area maraming 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 salamat po sa pagbisita ninyo sa amin sana hindi po kayo magsawa na bumisita pa sa mga school para marami pang mga estudyante ang matuto at mabigyang linaw ukol sa sensitive topic na ito sa reproductive health and gender issues maraming maraming salamat Coming up, learn more about the church's sunscreen film festival. But up next, see how dirty water led a small community in Bangladesh to Christ. He created butterflies and songbirds and flowers, not for any functional reasons, but to reach us at the soul level and uplift us. And to think that I, I'm given a gift to do that as well. My art doesn't serve a practical function, but to me it's not a luxury. It's what feeds our soul is what connects us with the spiritual. Welcome back. A global mission pioneer was able to connect with villagers in Bangladesh by meeting a practical need related to their drinking water. The villagers were deeply rooted in their religious practices, yet became more open to the gospel after the pioneer helped during a water crisis. Adventist Mission has more. In this country of 180 million, 
Only 0.5% or 900,000 are Christian. That wouldn't seem to make a real impact. But if you travel seven hours from Dhaka, cross a river, bump along muddy and rocky roads, and walk the last section, you'll find one who believes they can. This is Ajoy Kayang. He's working as a global mission pioneer in Bangladesh. Ajoy has worked closely with these villagers for a while now. Their traditional religious beliefs were very strong. They followed local religious practices they grew up learning. Like other villages across Bangladesh, these challenges are common. Ajoy prayed hard to overcome this and for a way to show them a powerful, caring savior. God answered with some practical ideas and some unexpected opportunity. When I saw in my village that there was sometimes fatal diseases like diarrhea, cholera, and malaria, I realized then that God was answering my prayer. Like many rural areas, the lack of clean water is a major challenge. In this village, they get their drinking water from the same river where they wash and bathe. Judging from the color of the water, it's no surprise that almost all the villagers became sick during a particularly bad season. With no medical services nearby or no finances to travel the long distance to find them, the villagers were desperate to be cured. When I saw they couldn't find any way to get the treatment, I called all of them together in the church. We decided that we will pray every evening for a week. So we did a week of prayer. At the end of the week, I saw that all of the sick were now cured. As a result, they accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Now most of the village is Christian. After experiencing God's power in their lives in such a miraculous way, the villagers met their challenges with a real and growing faith. Most of the villagers are poor and illiterate. They need help to teach their children and to send their children to school where they can study. And they need a proper well to get clean drinking water. In spite of the challenges, Ajoy is grateful to be a part of the global mission pioneer work. I want to give thanks to those brothers and sisters that support and pray for us. Because of your help, we can do God's work and preach His message to the people that do not yet know. Please pray for Global Mission Pioneers and for the villagers here in Bangladesh. Thank you for supporting Mission Wide in Bangladesh. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org, then clicking on Videos at the top. Did you know there is an Adventist Film Festival for student filmmakers? The unique event is called Sunscreen, and you can participate in this year's competition. Emily Mastrapa has more for this week's social media segment. Are you a student? Do you have a passion for film? If so, you might want to consider participating in Sunscreen Film Festival. The Sunscreen Film Festival is an annual gathering for Christian young adults who have a passion for using film and video for the purpose of creating timely and relevant productions. Sunscreen was created by the North American Division to nurture Christian filmmakers in their craft, career development, and spiritual lives. The Sunscreen Film Festival is now in its 17th year, and there's still time to submit your film to the festival. There are multiple categories that you can submit your film to, like comedy, animation, and documentary. Films must have been completed while the filmmaker was a student, and the film must not exceed 30 minutes in length. The deadline for the submissions is March 11. 
Visit sunscreen.com for more information and to see the rules for submission. Even if you aren't submitting a film, you can still participate in the festival. You can follow along with their updates at their Facebook page, at Sunscreen. This year, Sunscreen will take place April 5 through 7 at the new North American Division headquarters in Columbia, Maryland. You can visit sunscreen.com to register for the event. The Sunscreen Film Festival is an exciting gathering of visual storytellers and international attendees. We hope to see you and your films there. And finally for today's episode, let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week, learn about one of the church's former executive secretaries who served the church for nearly 50 years. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On March 1st, 1913, Clyde O. Franz was born to missionary parents in Cuba. An accounting graduate, in his late 20s, he served as secretary treasurer of conferences in the United States. Before he and his wife, Louis May, accepted a call to serve as missionaries back in the Caribbean where Clyde had been born. He was secretary treasurer of the West Indies Union, and then in 1950 became president of the Antillian Union Conference, which then had its headquarters in Cuba. From 1954 to 61, he was secretary of the Inter-American Division, followed by five years as the division treasurer. At the 1966 General Conference session, Franz was elected Associate Secretary of the General Conference, and four years later, the 1970s session elected him Executive Secretary of the World Church, a position he held for 10 years. During a decade that saw the denomination dogged by a number of controversies, both financial and theological, Franz provided a spiritually focused leadership. He retired at the 1980 session, aged 67, after 47 years of service. Remarkably, however, Clyde Franz lived in retirement for another 37 years, dying only last year in May 2017 at the age of 104. Also on March 1st, but 46 years later in 1959, the Adventist Medical Center, a new 15-bed hospital, opened on the outskirts of Naha, the capital city of Okinawa Prefecture in Japan. The hospital was the outgrowth of a small clinic opened six years earlier. Today, Adventist Medical Center in Okinawa is a 389-bed hospital that treats some 500,000 patients every year. And that was this week in Adventist history. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today, instead of the normal closing, we want to pay tribute to someone special. Mylon Medley has been a writer, producer, and anchor for ANN Video for more than 200 of our weekly programs. Sadly, today is her final day at ANN. Milan is leaving us to be the news editor for the North American Division. Milan, we will miss you. We appreciate your hard work and your contribution to ANN and the General Conference Communication Department. We are happy you will be close by and we will still get to see you and work with you in the future. We pray God's richest blessings on you as you take this next step. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. The passage says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of Him. That's our program for this week. But remember, you can always visit news.administ.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care. <laughs>